And you, this is a third technical violation, so you could get up to 15 days in jail on this. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Um, the allegation is that you failed to appear for drug testing on January 15th that you tested positive for alcohol this morning at the court with a 0 0.051 um, when you came in at 8.10, and then you had a 0 0.048 on, um, uh, at 8.13 a.m. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's right. She drove herself to court drunk because she has a drinking problem. You think it's bad now? Just wait. It gets worse. Um, Mr. Gazicki, how was your plan? Those, uh, 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 those charges, uh, Ms. Blackman's going to plead guilty and we can address the court prior to sentencing. Okay. So, ma'am, to the allegation that you failed to appear for drug testing on January 15th, how do you plead? Um, yes, sir. To the allegation that you came in this morning and tested positive on a PBT at the courthouse uh, at 8, 10 a.m. with a 0 0.051, uh, how do you plead? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Gazicki? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to accept the please. Okay. Um, I explained to Ms. Watkins these are serious, uh, you know, violations. Any violation is serious. Uh, there's a recommendation of five days in jail. Your Honor, I, I don't, you know, personally, I don't think that's really going to do, well, let me put it this way, it's going to cause more harm than good. Ms. Watkins, for one, expressed to me just her, the few hours that she's been in jail today has terrified her. She never wants to be in that situation again. I understand with the other violations, she was not exposed to any kind of incarceration, let alone five days. Um, the moment right now, uh, her main issue is she's got an 11-year-old son that's in school for 3 o'clock. There's no other arrangements for her, uh, the child to be picked up. Also, uh, Ms. Watkins has two part-time jobs. She's starting a, another part-time job in the morning. She makes about $14 an hour. And any kind of incarceration obviously is going to have an effect on the new job that she's just starting and possibly on the one that she has now. Um, she's trying her best, Your Honor. She does have doctor's appointment on Monday that she reports. She has your psychiatrist, a, a psychiatrist and a counselor, I believe. Is that correct? Therapist. Therapist. Um, you know, she has an issue of depression and anxiety. She has not had medication for those uh, for those uh, illnesses, and foolishly, or uh, you know, she took some alcohol this morning, trying to calm her um, her anxiety. Which, How'd she get to court today? How'd she get to court today? I drove. I made like two two minutes down the street. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's not a good move, but it's still not under the point zero eight, and there's no allegation that it impaired her driving. But it's not a wise choice. Not okay. Your Honor, uh, we're just asking the court if possibly the sentence could be held in advance. Uh, let her see her psychiatrist and therapist on Monday and see where that plays out. Anything else? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. This is her second use violation. This is the second positive alcohol screen she's had. I thought she should be in treatment court from the get, and I can't recall what it was that led her to not be in treatment court. It might have been that she wasn't interested in the program or that, uh, the time constraints were too much, but it's certainly clear to me that she needs increased supervision because she's not doing well. I couldn't imagine getting in a drunk driving accident, caught getting in a car accident, while drunk driving. She said a point two something. Yes. It was a point two four, point two four, two nine, something very high. It was three times the legal limit. You got in a crash, right? Then you get put on probation. You've already been caught drinking once and admitted to it. You've had another violation for a missed test, and now here we are. Um it's really concerning to me, Ms. Watkins, that you would drive a motor vehicle to a court to PBT test. I mean, it's the lack of judgment is so, it's startling, to be honest with you. It's shocking to me. And it says, and I think, Ms. Watkins, you know this, you've been in front of me. 
a few times, have I always treated you fairly? Yes. Like, I'm not disrespectful to you. I'm not, um, you know, I have expectations, so I have court orders that you've got to follow. And, and I can't not uh, impose a sanction, you know, um, on a violation like this. I mean, in a lot of, if it would have been your fourth violation, uh, you probably would have just done 90 days in jail. But I'm, I, I'm confined by the law. I can't do that. But your next one, I can. And if it's a use violation, if you're not taking advantage of the resources that we're providing you and you're not interested in um, trying to live your life in a different way that doesn't put you in front of a judge and maybe it's best you just do your 90 and move on. Um, we're going to extend probation three months. All other terms of probation will be completed. I, I can't see any. I think Kara's recommendation it, it could have been for 15 she's only asking for five i am adopting the recommendation she drove a vehicle to court with a 0 0.05 to see a probation officer while she's on probation for a drunk driving the recommendation of probation will be followed she's to serve five days of jail forthwith could she have a startup date tomorrow we honor take the arrangements for her child at school she can make phone calls. judge has a change of heart and allows her to go and pick up her child from school. She's to report back the next day to serve her time. That doesn't go well either. Okay, so the allegation is that you you came in this morning and you tested positive on a PBT at the courthouse on February 24th at 10.20 a.m. Uh, with a 0 .078. And then at 10.30 a.m. with a 0 .076 and that you admitted to drinking the night of February 1st of 2024. How do you plead to those allegations? Oh, I'm guilty. And you understand that if you enter a plea of guilty that you're waiving your hearing rights if I accept this plea. You understand that? There will be no hearing of any kind. Yes. Okay. And you still want me to accept that plea? Yes. And for the record, if I can word here my client for... Please. And Ms. Watkins, um, what was the last uh, test, Judge? 10? 10, 10 uh, 30 a.m. Can you understand, Ms. Watkins, that uh, it's one, one issue? So there's a chance you would still register some alcohol in your system if you were to take another PBT test. Just based on the timing, that's a possibility. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Is yes, that a yes? yes. And um, you and I have had an opportunity to talk, correct? Yes. And um, did uh, were you comfortable with understanding what we discussed? Yes. Not necessarily what we discussed that you were comfortable, with, but the fact that you know, we communicated fine, you understood what we were talking about. Yes. Right. And um, do you feel that uh, you are in any way impaired by your uh, use of alcohol? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Fanto. And it's one uh, fifty-five. I mean, if you're more comfortable, we can have a PBT. Oh, they, they, she would be fine with the numbers. Okay, all right. So I'm going to accept the plea as knowing and voluntarily given, Mr. Fanto. Anything on behalf of your client? Judge, I, uh, I appreciate the recommendation. However, um, number one, the um, I, I think given her lack of history, um, the recommendation is. Uh, is considerably high. I appreciate the fact that she's tested positive. She clearly needs help, um, and she acknowledges that. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we're a month or so short of being able to put her into treatment court at this point. Um, I would ask the court to consider um, the intensive uh, probation program for her after she serves her five days. Um, you know, the court always has the option of, of finishing any kind of jail time that it has available to it. Um, however, I think it's more important um, that we look at somebody who clearly needs help, is looking, acknowledging that she needs help. Um, and uh, I think that based on conversations yesterday, um, Ms. Grasso was setting up therapy and things of that nature, that was the plan. Yeah, she was set in the therapy already. She's had her intake. Um, that was to keep moving forward. And um, so I would ask the, the court to uh, uh, consider that the, the court still has that option available to it in terms of the remaining jail days. But I think 
um, it, it's more important um, for uh, Ms. Watkins' long-term state of life because, quite frankly, uh, you know, jail is not something that um, A, is rehabilitative, but B, uh, is productive for her on a long-term basis. So I'd ask the court to consider that. Um, however, if the court is considering jail time, um, I think uh, 30 days would be far more appropriate than a 90-day recommendation. Um, Mr. Fanto, under any other circumstance, I would agree with you. I think I'm a pretty compassionate person, but the extent of this violation is absolutely appalling and egregious. And um, reason doesn't seem to work with Ms. Watkins. She was here yesterday because she drove into the court with a 0 .05. And I mean, her defense was, well, it wasn't that far of a drive. I was courteous enough and kind enough because she had a kid to not immediately take her into custody. Instead, I advised her she could go pick her kid up from school, um, get the kid home, come up with some, your, her child home, come up with some alternative uh, child care arrangement so she could serve her few days on that violation. And I told her, if you don't come back tomorrow, you're going to get all the time. Um, you're going to get all of it because it'll be your fourth violation. So she came back today. She drunk drove to the court while on probation. I mean, it's a 0.7, a 0.78. I mean. I didn't, I didn't drive today. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. How'd you get here? I got to drop off. You came up to the court with a 0.78 the day after you just got in trouble for coming up to the court with a 0 0.05. So you literally two days in a row. And I, I don't know, I can't even begin to understand what you must have been thinking. And I, I think it's clear to all of us that you have a substance use problem right but i can't fix everybody they don't want to be fixed and after you know yesterday you came out from sitting in the back for a couple hours and you had seen the light and you were going to behave and we weren't going to see you again you were ready to follow the straight and narrow and instead not even 24 hours later you came into the court drunk I mean, it, it's so appalling to me that there's 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 nothing else that's appropriate. 30 days is not appropriate. You're going to do 90 days with credit for the days you've served, terminate probation without improvement, and fines and costs will be waived. Go on to pleadings. All right. City of Taylor versus Crystal, Crystal Wiktorski. Good, Your Honor. Your Honor. Matthew Zick for the people. Your Honor, Bill Kolobis on behalf of the defendant, and I see the prosecutor has his festive holiday colors on. Okay. Your Mr. sweater. He's right. always festive. Right. And here I came down here thinking I was going to see him in person. But it's like the movie starts. You see him on TV only. All right. Mr. Kolobis can keep buttering me up, but uh, we did file a response in this an our, uh, answer in this um, uh, case, Your Honor. And uh, we are objecting to uh, Mr. Clovis' motion. Uh, okay. Which, uh, Your Honor, um, I was surprised that there was um, opposition to this, but uh, that's okay. Um, Your Honor, my client uh, did not realize that when she pled guilty, um, that it would affect her employment. She was, uh, she's the CMA, yes. uh, been for six years. Um, she was immediately suspended because this showed up on her record. And I believe she may have it under advisement. The problem is the under advisement was under 771, which is a conviction until you complete probation. And then it's removed if you satisfactory do that. That's what I understand uh, that she did in court with um, counsel. Uh, Your Honor, respectfully, we're requesting that um, the case uh, be set aside the guilty plea, not knowing that, uh, or the case, case be uh, reviewed and dismissed um, very early, like maybe today or very, very soon. So she has not had any employment whatsoever since this. She's lost her car um, because of this, bank accounts, and she has small children. So it's really... Um, caused an extreme hardship that she didn't realize this was going to cause. It was almost like 
that decision that came down about if somebody pleads guilty and they're going to be um, deported. Uh, certainly, it's not as strong as that. Okay. He, um, she also just told me, and she could swear to this, uh, if called upon, that she had asked her attorney at the time uh, if it would affect her employment, and he said no. This was, I believe, a neighbor situation, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. that's all you have to say. Mr. Zack, your response? Your Honor, as Mr. Clover, the collateral consequences are not uh, a, an adequate or sufficient basis uh, to allow the withdrawal of a guilty plea. And Mr. Clovis correctly cited that there is a special carve out for that, and that is for immigration consequences. But other than that, Your Honor, uh, employment consequences or other collateral consequences are not a sufficient basis. If the plea process was appropriate, which I believe it was in this case, that uh, she was represented by counsel at the time of the plea, uh, the um, uh, defendant was advised of her rights uh, appropriately under MCR 6.610 F8. And Your Honor, uh, people object to any kind of uh, withdrawal at this time is uh, it would cause substantial uh, prejudice to the prosecution for the reason, as I stated in paragraph five, the people are very unlikely to be able to proceed with this case if the plea uh, was set aside. This matter has been closed. The My understanding from speaking uh, on the phone with the victim at time of sentencing is she was moving out of state. And um, Your Honor, we're asking that the plea stand uh, as given by the defendant when she was represented by counsel, by predecessor counsel. You know, the hardship is uh, of six years schooling and employment, and now she cannot be employed in that field. Um, she has a defense, but she thought with court appointed counsel, she had limited funds, of course, raising children on her own. And she thought she would just um, plead responsible or guilty to an offense be under advisement and then dismissed. She didn't know that it's a conviction. And then after a period of time, then it's removed from your conviction. And she didn't understand that. Um, I don't know why it's being fought so hard by the prosecutor. I mean, that, because he's indicating that it'd be unfairly prejudicial to his ability to prosecute in the future because a complaining witness is gone. Well, I mean, out of state. But Mr. Kolobis, like if you look at the rule, right, we're talking about a motion to withdraw a plea after sentencing. And I listened to the record yesterday on this case when I got the motion. She, and I understand there are collateral consequences to all kinds of things, but the constitutional rights that she was in, in, that I am mandated to ensure that she understands were all read to her on the record. She was, I, I mean, we went through it. It was, if you look at the rule on how I'm supposed to take a plea, I asked her everything I was supposed to ask her and she responded to all of those questions according. I understand, so, your, your Honor, as to any um, hardship uh, or prejudice uh, by Zoom, which the prosecutor's uh, appearing now, by Zoom, the witness could give testimony by Zoom, wherever she's at. I've had people in Europe give testimony, um, Your Honor. And if not, if the court is so inclined not to set aside, we would ask after all these months that the court do the review. She has not been in trouble and go forward and dismiss it early. Yeah, and, and Mr. Kolobus. Oh, it's been over a year. Okay. No, Your Honor, I believe the plea was taken back in June of this year. Yeah, I'm looking. The plea was in, I know for certain the sentencing was July 19th. I'm looking at the, the jail task force legislation on early probation discharge, and assault and battery is not one of the listed offenses. Um, well, I would ask the prosecutor, can we please amend the plea as to the under advisement period of time or 771. Uh, this offense happened approximately a year ago, and um, she was on probation in June. 
So she's coming up to six months. No, she started probate. Yes, yeah, I think her six month is in January. I would just ask Mr. Prosecutor if you'd be so inclined to amend the condition if the court accepts it uh, to, um, you know, whatever five months or whatever it may be, you know, prior to Christmas, maybe, just so she can get back to work. They suspended her pending this period of time. And she has knowing. I, I believe the appropriate vehicle for Mr. Kolovis, uh, as he knows, would be to file a motion for early discharge of probation, even though it's not entitled under the statute. In any case, uh, a defendant always has the ability to petition the court for early discharge if in full compliance. Uh, but that wouldn't be something uh, that the people would be involved in. That's uh, post conviction. Yeah, I mean, she's, I mean, I don't know what the status of her probation is. I know I haven't seen her on violations, to my knowledge. So I can only assume that she's doing what she needs to do, or she would have been sent up here to see me. So she's eligible for termination at the halfway point under the jail task force legislation. So, and she was sentenced on 719, 819. 9, 19, 10, 11, 12. So on January 19th, she's eligible for early termination. And if she's complied with all of the terms of probation, I would certainly grant that. Um, I have probation officer in the courtroom looking it up, I know. But Mr. Keyes, I'm looking at the statute. The DVs. Oh, that, that was I can't. Oh, you weren't? I was like, I know, because we've had this discussion about assaulted cases before. But she's eligible, Mr. Kolovis. I have to with, deny the motion to withdraw the plea respectfully. I think the court rule on this is abundantly clear. Um, and after sentencing, um, it's it's a high standard to me. And, and you know, I, I listened to the plea. And if you want a transcript of it, you're happy to have one if you intend on... I, I trust your honor. Uh, appealing up, but I, I had Miss Maudlin pick it up yesterday to make sure that everything in the plea was right. Um, and, and I, I just, guess I was just looking at equity on this and hoping the prosecutor would have uh, <clears throat> pulled his heartstrings on this. But if he I wants to stay straight, the prosecutor's got to follow the law, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Look, you two can uh, fight it out in the hallway no, if you no, need no. to. Listen, no, no. I'm okay. I have to follow the law. I'm governed by the court rules. I feel very uh, sympathetic to Miss Witorski, but this is an assaulted case and she kind of got herself into this. I mean, the allegation was that she's at a gas station, she's punching someone in the face. No, this woman was in my home now over a guy. She was in my the home in my bed in after house. my 16 hour shift. Oh, she was in her bed after she came home with my parents. with the children. I wish she would have uh, pursued it further, but. She had court appointed counsel, and I, um, I didn't represent her at the time. She has no money to do an appeal, so I guess to the prosecutor, Merry Christmas. <laughs>